Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy to I be here. I am so excited to have um, Jennifer Esposito, actress, health advocate, and the author of Jennifer's Way and Jennifer's Way Bakery in my studio, um, sitting down to share her unbelievable story of health recovery with me and the Wellbe audience. So thank you so much for being here. You're so welcome. Um, I know it's a pretty amazing one, so I'm not going to ask you anything more other than, you know, start from the beginning. Tell well, us what happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This went over a span of 30 years of my life, so um, cliff notes are, uh, I was sick since the time I was born. Like, I literally was born with an allergy. I came out and I was covered in red welts. And um, the doctor said, oh, she must be allergic to the soap that we washed her in. And looking back now, knowing as much as I know now, knowing that obviously my autoimmune system was compromised. So going through my younger years, teeth didn't grow in properly or at all, which is one of the biggest signs of celiac disease for uh, young, young mothers to watch out uh, young parents. Um, and then started stomach issues, but then started anxiety issues from the time I was probably like 13. Um, which seemed normal because my mom had them, my dad had them. So it was like, oh, um, you're, you're nervous or you have a sensitive stomach or, uh, you know, just every excuse under, under the sun. Um, got into around, I'd say late teen, like mid, like 16, 17, when we really started testing me. I had mono really bad. Then I had Epstein's bar really bad, so it was becoming a perfect storm. And then what happened was, again, the anxiety was really becoming an issue. Um, panic attacks started, but m mild panic attacks. And I'll say that because what I get to later, that was full blown. So what started to happen was, um, then I would get neuropathy over a side of my body and everything, the whole side of my face would droop. It was like a palsy almost but they weren't saying it was a palsy. So I was tested for MS and um, everything you can imagine back when I was younger, barium enemas, that every kind of test you can look at. Then I had uh, uh, I, around 18, 19, I had to have a wisdom tooth extracted because it was impacted. And the, the anesthesia that was given to me threw something off chemically so bad that I went into complete agoraphobic behavior. Oh my gosh. I had to move back in with my parents and lived with them for the next three, four years to get back on my feet. I was not only agoraphobic, and if anyone doesn't know what agoraphobia means, it's um, the panic becomes so great that you don't move out of the house. Like you can't go out. The Everything outside was an issue for me. Um, Speaking was an issue for me. I would go into complete sweat, drenched in sweat, and I would tremble. And um, I was I was in such bad shape. And the depression, and I had dealt with depression in my life from all of this stuff, but also, again, because this was all gut-related. The depression went so low that it was suicidal thoughts and horrible time. So I was brought to a uh, psychotherapist, and I was put on every medication under the sun. And um, I remember in that chunk of time when I was literally housebound, I would just sit in my bed and just flip channels. Like, I was gone. And I remember watching one talk show, and it talked about vitamins. And I had never heard of anything like this. I knew about vitamins, but not in this capacity. And it was talking about vitamin D, and what it does for the nervous system. And for some reason, I told my dad to go and get the book. And I read the whole book and thought, the next time he goes, I'm gonna tell him to get me some vitamin D. And uh, vitamin, D, no, I'm sorry, it was vitamin B. Excuse me, vitamin B. And I said, get me vitamin B and I, get me these pellets, because they said in the book, that go under your tongue. And that book led me to another book, which was uh, a book about cognitive therapy. And it was um, wearing rubber band on your wrist to, 
snap you back into a state of like being present for the panic attacks and counting backwards and all these tricks. So little by little, as they kept wanting to up my medication, and I was at a point where the doctors wanted to give me shock therapy because, oh yeah, I mean, you're like, like, what era are we living in? They wanted to give me shock therapy and I would just sit with the therapist and look at him like, I don't have anything to say to you. Like, I'm not well, I don't know what it is, but I know what you're saying doesn't make sense to me. So I would just sit there and he would think I was just really ignoring him, which I kind of was, but he wanted, they eventually wanted to give me shock therapy. And I, I remember reading these books like, I didn't have a fight, but there was still some kind of voice saying there's something else going on. So eventually with the vitamin B I was taking, the cognitive therapy, little by little. And by the way, my eating at the time was a bagel for breakfast with like a gallon of orange juice, completely all sugar. My lunch was leftover pasta from the night before. My dinner was probably pasta with something else. So everything I was doing was hurting me and I didn't know it. I wound up getting through that period of life. Um, I went on to do a lot of work. Every step of the way I was ill uh, with something different because I now was becoming, I had a, I like to call it in my first book, Jennifer's Way, a bag of tricks, which I saw my mother have. I had Pepto-Bismol for my stomach. I had ginger ale for my nausea. I had smelling salts in case I felt like I was going to pass out. I had old tranquilizers from whichever doctor in case I was going to have a panic attack. I had bag of tricks that helped me gravitate through my life. We get so used to thinking that this is normal when it's not normal. We don't know the difference. So I thought it was normal. I saw my mother behave this way. So I got through and I was a fighter and I got through until I got to late twenties or mid twenties when this started to rear its ugly head again in a, in a big way. And I remember I went to everyone. I went to so many different doctors and then I started getting into the metaphysical and then I'm seeing a witch doctor and they're telling me to, you know, don't wear black to bed, wear white, call in the good spirits, like everything oh my you gosh. can imagine. No joke. I was doing energy healing. I was doing everything. And then I had a doctor come who, uh, muscle, they do muscle tests. Mm -hmm. And I never forget, he said, gather everything that's in your house that you use all the time, product, food, blah, 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 cleaning product, everything. And let's see. And he tested. And I was allergic to everything that he put in my hand. And I was like, okay, he's a quack too, because I can't be allergic to everything in the house. I was, I will know 10 years later. This went up and down like this for years. I tried every different thing. I was always exercising, always, you know, trying to be fit. And then I would notice, you know, different diets, the fat free, and then I would notice the um, vegetarian. And then I would know. And so I would go through these different stages and try everything to see what would make me feel better. And there were certain things that did make me feel better. Like I remember um, there was a great vegetarian, actually it's a pescatarian, restaurant right by an old apartment of mine. I would eat there religiously and I remember feeling better and not making the connection yet of what exactly it was, but I was eating a lot more vegetables, was taking out the pasta more, um, you know, fish and oils and, you know, things that I wasn't used to eating. So as that grew, things, you know, got a little better and, but then they'd go right back down. I would start to get recurring sinus infections constantly um everything here would get swollen and around the eyes as you probably know is allergy as soon as you see redness and swelling around the eyes you can pretty much look inside and say there's an allergy going on somewhere so constant constant would attack here i was taken to so many different doctors this one doctor finally said okay i got it the bridge of your nose is too small. So what we're going to do, we're going to drill holes through your eyebrows. We're going to really, I mean, if I would have done everything. Are you I'm so kidding serious. me? It's like Frankenstein. First shock treatment and then they want to drill holes through my head. Like if I would have listened, God only knows where I would be. Um, but so they wanted to drill holes through the eyebrows, release the pressure. 
because it wasn't draining, blah, blah, never thinking, well, why is there so much toxicity wanting to ex escape? Like, why? why is there so much mucus is the way why? for the body to get rid of get something rid it doesn't something. want. So yeah. why? Like with the stomach, no one, oh, you have irritable bowel, but that just means my bowel is irritated. Why is it irritated? Right. They look at you like, huh? Like, like that's, that's really not, not right my question. problem. Exactly. Yeah. That's your issue. No, no, that's your issue. So I started to realize that this was my issue, but still I was very much thinking they're the doctor. So I'm going to listen, but I definitely questioned. So I had the reoccurring sinus infections. It got to a point where they were so bad that I was constantly on um, steroids, which throw you off, as you know, horribly, and uh, then antibiotic. So I was a complete disaster. And they, by the way, would give me antibiotic for everything. Antibiotic, antibiotic, antibiotic. Who knew? Back, I just listened. I never, ever liked taking anything, and I'm very affected by medication, so I would, like, take it and then stop and, like, I would get scared. So it became, I was, I was doing a show in Los Angeles and then I started to have my face, is, my, my skin started to peel on my face. Um, fingernails started to chip really bad. Hair started to fall out in clumps and the exhaustion, I was always exhausted, but the exhaustion was at an all time insane high. Like we can be chatting and I'd be like <laughs> asleep and I had to work. I had to, you know, I had to show up more. And I, I, I don't think I've, I missed maybe one or two, two weeks of work in my entire life because of being ill. Cause I'd never wanted it to stop me. And literally one day in the middle of a take, a tooth popped out of my mouth. Like your lit, real tooth, my real tooth popped out of my mouth. And I was like, did my, did my tooth just fall out? And they're like, um, Yes, you're ill. I was like, I know, I know, but no one's helping me. Oh, and by the way, I was with a gastroenterologist, one of the best gastro gastroenterologists this entire, la this prior five years up to this. He never once checked me for celiac disease. He told me I had a parasite that he didn't, never found. Then I had C. difficile colitis, which a young person doesn't get. And I was hospitalized for that because I was so ill. Like these random things and no one ever thought to check what is going on here. Well, the sad thing is C. diff is rising like crazy. Rising like crazy, but this was back 12 years. Okay, so yeah. So it was, I was in quarantine. Like oh my I was, it God. was a disaster area. And then they were pumping me with flagell and I was allergic to the flagell obviously because of the glue. It was a disaster. Oh my God. So, so basically, I went back to this ENT who thought that there was something else going on. So he was the first person I was like, I don't want to give you more steroids, but you have a sinus infection again. I don't know why you're getting this. And he said, please go see this internist, female internist. Maybe she can help you. And that's where my first, my book, Jennifer's Way, which became a New York Times bestseller because I think it was the first time that people were speaking honestly about this. Because right on the cover it says what doctors aren't telling you and what they're not doing. I, look, I have nothing against doctors and I think some of them are fantastic, but the way we are set up in our society now with healthcare and insurance, they've got 10 minutes, not even, seven minutes, in and out. You cannot deal with people in seven minutes. You cannot do it and then just prescribe medication. It's impossible. So I went and saw this woman, and this is, like I said, it was the first page of my book. I went in there and my, my assistant at the time had to carry me in because I was so ill, so painfully, and then the panic attack started. I couldn't exist. It was horrendous. So I sat So with the her. panic attack was in the office? It, I, no, they were constant at the time. Oh, like, okay. They would roll into another, like in my home. It, they, they were at a state, they were uncontrollable. And I was taking medication for them. So I was like, there's something wrong here. And I went to her and she started speaking to me and I was just like sobbing. And, and she looked at me and she said, do you want to kill yourself? And I thought, you're my last hope. If 
you're going to tell me that somehow this is in my mind, like so many years of so many people telling me it's this, it's that, they would always come back to, you're stressed, you're a female, you're hormones, you're dramatic, you're an actress, you're a hypochondriac. Always giving me, leaving the office with a label and with a prescription. And I thought, if you're going to do that to me, you're going to kill me. Right, you're gonna you're gonna be the one who's gonna you're gonna break me, and I'm go, I'm gonna throw myself off a bridge because this you're the medical professional. If you're gonna tell me my mind somehow made a tooth jump out of my mouth, no, 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 we're not doing that today. And I thought, okay, is that what you see? And she said, okay, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. And then we spoke for another two hours, like literally. And she called me three days later, she took a bunch of blood and she said, you have the highest case of celiac disease I have ever seen. I don't know how you're alive. She's like, I just don't, I don't know how no one caught this. I had never heard of it before and I had been researching. I had been in it, never heard of it before. She said, I want you to get that gastroenterologist on the phone right now. And we all three got on the phone and she said, this is what I found. I need to understand how you as a gastroenterologist never checked her for this. He said, I didn't think of it. She was like, okay. A gastroenterologist yeah. doesn't think of that. That's think of the it. most he didn't think like gut related. He didn't think of it. And I thought, okay, wow. But I at the time was so elated elated. You like, probably almost left him, I, like let him off the hook. I, I did. You were like, and thinking back now, I should have sued him and not for me and monetary, but he shouldn't be practicing. Everything now that I know far too much that I even want to know, the gut is the core of every single thing in your body. Every single thing in your body. And if I come to you as a gastroenterologist, you are number one in, in, helping a human being because you are in charge or supposed to be in charge of that area which indicates everything in how you're feeling everything so the fact that you didn't think of it you shouldn't be working anymore i really should have went after him but i was so elated i knew something was wrong and it was like okay what do i do because that's what we're used to where's the minute what do i do and she was like well she didn't know enough but she knew what the disease was but she said She's, you need to see a specialist now. And that's where the journey begins. And that's a whole other story because I realized they, oh, gluten-free was not even the tip of the iceberg for what I had ahead of me. So I can't wait to hear this part, yeah. but I also want to know how did that internist spend two hours with you? Because the medical model, like you said, it's, it, it doesn't really well, allow I for that. I was the... paying out of pocket. Oh, okay. That's, that's the answer one. to everything, exactly. right? Exactly. But it was also, I don't think she wanted a suicide on her hands. Like, I was so ill. So I think she really uh, took a moment and said, I, I need to help this person because she's, she's really not well. And I could see that her soul was battered at this point. But physically, you cannot tell me that the tooth popped out of my mouth because I'm depressed. <laughs> Right. That's not happening. So she knew that there was a physical component and you could see it. Like I said, my, the hair was falling out, the nails, the skin, the, I, um, my blood work always through the years came back that my liver enzymes were really high. Um, jaundice, I would get very yellow, like things were not working properly. So right. you could see that there was something, but no one ever took the time to go underneath. Right. And even as you just said, like, this is not depression. Now we know because of the gut brain connection, and all the recent research, we know that depression is a symptom. Is a and symptom. so is it's a like symptom. even even that is all roads lead to the gut. But it's I have to tell you, um, I work with people privately and um, we may know that, but people still don't know that when people are dealing with depression and panic disorder, they want to understand how to get better. The road with the gut, it's a road. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to heal the gut. When at my worst, when they threw me in the psych ward for, we'll go to that story, for a day, I was on four Klonopin a day, four. 
and I was still like four. I take nothing now, not one pill, not one anything. I don't have panic disorder anymore. I don't have depression anymore. I don't get highs and lows, none of it. But it took time for my gut to heal. So when I work with people and I try, you know, here's the diet we're getting on. No more sugar, no more caffeine, no more this, no more that, no. But here's what I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna show you how you can still eat. You can still have cake, you can have cookies, you can have bread, because I've learned how to give back, give you that back. They still, it's very hard to comprehend that this is gonna make something so scary go away. They rely on that medication. And I am living proof that you don't need it. You don't need it. You need it at a time when you're in a scary place to get you to a point. Because what I did learn in this, most of the serotonin that, that connects the mood is in the gut. So when I first was diagnosed, I, I went to someone who said to me, no, I need to give you anti antidepressant. I was like, no, you will not put me on another. And she said, no, you're not understanding me. This is not for your mind here. This is for here. It needs to balance the serotonin in your gut because it's not... Your gut is completely off. We need to balance that serotonin. This is not about your mind. And I thought, that makes sense to me. i have never heard of giving an antidepressant for gut problems. Well, not for gut problems, to balance the serotonin. That was affecting this, but needed to balance that because it was so off and it's going to take a while to get it in a right position. So it, it needed to help balance things out to get it to a stable place to then start incorporating. Because like I said, this takes time. Healing your gut does not happen overnight. Yeah. Well, tell me about the psych ward before yes, you tell me how fun. you healed. <laughs> that was fun. So basically what happened, I went to the best of the best of the best. Um, as they say, he was the best. And he's still practicing and the best. Um, I don't agree. Um, I know there are many that don't agree. Um, I went to him. How long ago this was this? Was, Where was this in your... This was like 10 years ago when I was diagnosed, probably like 10 years now. So I went to him, all my records were sent, and I had about a month to wait before I saw him. Now, the type of person I am, I'll read everything and anything there is to read because I need to understand. If I don't understand something, I can't rest. So I needed to understand what this thing was called celiac disease. One person had mentioned to me, you may go through a detox. And I was like, what's a detox? And that's another reason I wrote the book because there were things that no one tells you. I went through such a detox, it was like getting off heroin. I, I can't even begin the detox period that I went through. It was so horrendous. It was almost worse than being on gluten. What were some of the things that happened? Constantly sweating, constantly shaking, constant inflammation up in the chest that you feel like you can't breathe, so it triggers panic attacks, headaches, stomach, um, so much so that I was developing hives all over my body because I was so deficient in vitamin D that when the, the sun would touch my skin, I'd break out in hot, like oh. everything you can imagine. Wow. Horrifying. So I was reading everything. Um, I had an apartment with windows, a lot of windows, but the only place that, that didn't have windows was in my kitchen. And I was literally living in my kitchen because the stimulus from the light was even too much for my nervous system. That's how broken down my nervous system is. So with celiac disease, when you go over a long period of time un undiagnosed, your body wants to stay alive. Your body will fight to stay alive. Because celiac disease, as you know, the villi surrounding the, the small intestine is what is in charge of taking nutrients from the food. With those, those villi being either damaged or dead, you can't absorb nutrients from food. So for me, all like my villi were done. So I wasn't absorbing anything. So I was so vitamin and, and I was just so deficient in everything. So what happens, your body starts to steal from other places for energy and to stay alive. So it steals from the bones or steals from the nervous system. Mine was stealing from the nervous system in such a major way. So that's why I had such nerve issues. Um, like fingertips, I couldn't feel, you know, it was just, it was insane. So I was literally living in my kitchen because there was no light. Because as soon as the light hit, I would, it was just horrible. So I would make my way to this doctor. All I know is he was like, yeah, you, you have to get off gluten. You're really ill. 
um, and go see the, the, the vitamin girl. And she was like, yeah, you can take a one a day. And she was telling me where to get good bread. And I was like, no, this, this, that's it. Yeah. What about all the vitamin deficiencies? You're telling me I have wrong. What about the panic? What about like, what? Yeah. Like it was like, man. but they were studying me because I was so ill. And I thought this does not make sense. So I was waiting for him in the, in his waiting room at one point. And, um, I, I, my father was with me and I was like, I, I can't sit here. Like I was, like I said, four Klonopin a day, still jumping out of my skin. And I saw him and I said, doctor, I need to be admitted because he worked, he works at a hospital. And I said, I need to be admitted. I can't do this. Like I'm jumping out of my skin. I feel like I want to jump out the window. And he said, okay, go down, go into the emergency room, but don't go to the left, go to the right. And I'll have someone wait for you. I said, okay. I went downstairs and I did what he said. They put me in a dark room. They put me in a room. I shut the lights because I couldn't take the light. They gave me a gown. They made me sign like, Okay, I'm gonna admit myself, blah, blah. Um, and before I knew it, I was wheeled upstairs to the psych board and the doors closed behind me. Thankfully, my father was with me and there I was. And, and I thought, no, no, wait a minute. I thought I was gonna be in the hospital. Well, you said you felt like you wanted to jump out the window. So we were scared for your well-being now that you may hurt yourself. I was like, no, no, no. You cannot put a person who's having severe panic attack behind locked doors and windows. I am not meant, you're not going to do this to me again. I'm not mentally ill. I'm, I'm sick. I'm physically sick. And they would, okay. Oh, okay. God. Like that. And, and this is when I said, if I ever get out of here, cause I didn't know if I was going to make it out of, out of there. Cause I'm a fighter. If anybody would have tried to restrain me, I would have kicked someone in the face and like, and then I would have been. They asked my father, can we restrain her if she gets like, oh my. like it was like I was on Cuckoo's Nest in the movie and I didn't audition. I was like, I don't want any part of this. Like this, I'm ill. Like I'm ill. Um, and I remember sitting there because they made me wait for eight hours to see how I was. And they were monitoring me. And I remember sitting there thinking, you better keep it cool, girl. Like you better keep yourself in check. And I remember watching these people and, and thinking, and I caught eyes with this one man. He was a young man, and it breaks my heart because who knows where he is today. And he was sitting there, and he was just staring at me, and he was, like, gone. He was on so much medication, and he was so gone. And they're serving lunch, and it was boxed fruit and pigs in a blanket and potato chips and soda. And they were like, would you like to eat? I was like, would I like to eat? I have celiac disease. I can't eat this. The nurse said, what's that? And I thought, oh, we are in trouble. How do you know if that guy doesn't have celiac disease? How do you know you just gave him a whole bunch of medication? I was like, that'll be me. That'll be me. I looked at my father because he was like, can I go home now? I was like, <laughs> let me tell you something. If you leave, I'm dead. I'm letting you know right now. Like, if you leave, I'm dead because I won't make it here. They're going to kill me with just what they give me to eat let alone wanting to sedate me, that was a whole day. I wind up saying, listen, if anything happens to me, my father was like, it's on my, it's on me. She's not going to kill herself. That was a statement. She's fine. And they finally let me out after eight hours. But I have to say that day was remarkable because I remember going home to an apartment I owned and I lived in for 10 years. And I remember everything looking different. And I thought, the idea that if I'm sick and, and, and can't help myself, that I can call 911 and get help was done. I was like, you can't do that anymore because they don't know what this is and they're not looking to help you. They're looking to medicate you. And I thought, you are on your own. You got to get up tomorrow, start researching and figure this out because you're on your own. And, I, and that's when it started and I thought, okay, and that's what I did. I realized that night the inflammation that was coming up and it felt like panic. I realized, Jennifer, this is not panic. This is because I'm so inflamed in my gut. The acid is coming up and I feel like I'm suffocating. So I'm going to sleep propped up. So all these tips I started to write down. Okay, I'm going to sleep propped up. I'm going to, let me see, aloe vera. I know that's natural. Will that help? Okay, I'll drink some of that. That helps. 
hot water with lemon. That seems to soothe it. I would write everything down one by one by one and little by little by little by little. After speaking to people in chat rooms, because people were not talking about celiac disease, I started to understand there were so many like me and start to like take things. And then I would get neuropathy over the whole side of my body. Okay, what is that linked to? That's linked to vitamin D or that's linked to vitamin B. Let me get on vitamin. And it was like piecing a puzzle together that was enormous. And, um, and then come to, you know, opening a bakery and, 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 and books and helping people privately now, because I really do believe, and this goes now I'm at a place where this goes so far beyond celiac and allergy ridden people and Lyme and autoimmune people, the food in our country, the way we're making food, growing food, and then the medical system and the way they want to keep us all on drugs is affecting everyone. So, and then the wellness industry becoming even more of a problem, giving wrong information. So now we're at a place where it's like, okay, what the hell do we do? It's a free for all. So um, that's why you're doing what you're doing. I'm doing what I'm doing and trying to give some proper information because it's scary out there. It really I, I couldn't agree more because I think you raised a really good point, which I talk about a lot as a patient advocate, like mm -hmm. you have to take back your power. When you Must. decide Must. that you are the CEO, that you are the boss, yep. and these people who you let into your space yep. to help you, whether it's a doctor, a practitioner, mm -hmm. family, whatever, mm -hmm. they're all just still, in a way, people. people. Human. They have their own biases, they have their own 100%. mistakes, like the first gastroenterologist. 100%. So don't give away your power to anybody, even if they're brilliant. It's very hard when you're so ill. You want to feel better. And Absolutely. Like I said, even working with people today, they know my journey. They see my journey. They see I'm thriving. I don't take any medication. I, I, nothing. But they still, they're hurting. And they, in this culture, we want a quick fix. And they feel like you're this the road, answer, right? And they do, but then they don't listen. You have to do the work. To get on this road, you have to do the work. I can't, I can't give you any, an easy fix. I always say, would you rather um, a quick fix um, or would you rather feel better long term? That quick fix may fix you right now, tomorrow, but that quick fix will eventually wear off and create another issue. Absolutely. Or do you want to get underneath what's happening, deal with that, and go from there? But it takes time. So on that, how long did it take from that day that you kind of decided, I'm going to start doing the work for you, you know, to feel, to, to be all to, to off feel, meds well, and feel good? This is and, another point I always bring to people. Um, I was waiting for a very long time to feel like myself again. And I realized, who are you waiting to feel like? That girl who was making excuses and had a, a bag of tricks? Why are you waiting to feel like her? She wasn't well. You need to discover who this new person is. Who, the, who is this person who doesn't have to sleep in the middle of the day? Who is this person who can think clearly, doesn't need to pop rubber bands to make anxiety go away? This is a new person. So you need to figure out who that is and what that looks like. And also what I say to people, autoimmune is autoimmune. I always say it's like keeping a runaway, like a, a, a wildfire at bay. The environment, your stress, the way you're sleeping, enough water, like all of it plays a part, all of it. So I still go through, you know, where I get a flare and then I'll go back. But now I know how to tame the fire and calm the fire. And when it goes out, I know what it is. I don't oh, run to the doctor and like, oh my God, what happened? Um, so it it's an ongoing process. To have um, a healed gut, it's every day. This isn't like go on this diet for 10 days. I was working with someone recently. She has ish issues. And I can see the anxiety is so great, even greater than she's even aware. It's so great. And I kept saying to her, yes, this autoimmune protocol diet is three weeks, but this is a way of life. Okay, but when can I get back to coffee? When can I get back to a lot of nuts? When can I? You're not hearing me. <laughs> this is a way of life. You need to get on this train. And that's why I offer people anything you want. 
in a different way. Bread, cookies, cake, cheese, everything in a different way. I don't want to deprive anyone. I'm not going to be deprived. I want to eat. I want to eat well and I love good food. So I just make things in a different way. So you don't deprive yourself, but you have to think of food differently now. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't go back to feeling like I was feeling for, for a regular piece of bread or a piece of cake. No, I don't want to. So there's got to be a real mind adjustment. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a couple of stories I've told in the past of recovery mentioned obviously a massive diet change and a long road like it's you a had mental change but too. also a dedication and a belief that they were worthy of good health I, I said this in one of my last classes because I do these classes where I'll make something but it's I always say this isn't about the recipe this is about more than this recipe that I'm giving you why are you not doing this for yourself what what is it do you feel you're worthy to do this? Like, that's the first thing, because this takes time. Celiac has changed the course of my life, and, and, and God knows where I would have been. But I would never have known. Like, for instance, I hated cauliflower. Like, I hated the smell of it. I hated the mention of it. I didn't understand the vegetable. Like, why is this even... Why is this even alive? Why did they I even like make it. this stupid why vegetable? Why yeah. stupid? It smells. It's like, what? is this who likes it's this? not even green it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not green why does it does it exist like i hate i didn't understand it now i make everything from breakfast porridge to lunch to dinners to pizza like there's so many naturally gluten-free wonderful things out there that you have no idea because you're so used to going to the the market and picking some box of crap up and making it quick and thinking like you're doing what that's that's i would have never known I would have never, you know, there's so many other things celiac has brought me, but that's one of them. Um, the amount of the love and respect I have for food and where it comes from now is a completely different thing. So I always like to tell people, forget about what you're lost. What did you gain? What, what did you gain? That's a great way of thinking about it. When you think about how many fruits and vegetables there are on the planet and other, you know, plant-based like legumes and nuts and yes. whatever, and how many of them are not even close to being in the American, standard American diet. No. And the process of taking things out, yes, can be sometimes hard, but if you replace them with all these interesting new things Absolutely. that you've never experimented Absolutely. with, it stops feeling like depravity and yes. more like abundance in yes. a whole different way. And that's exactly how I feel. I mean, I was just in Paris and, you know, seeing some of those incredibly beautifully baked breads you know you're like oh my god but to me it's just it's just the experience of of tasting someone's creation that that makes me sad at times but then i'm able to go and see that and make it at home or try to create it myself or go to a place that understands these things and makes their bread in a different way that i can enjoy so you know it, again, I always say, don't look at the things that you cannot have anymore because those things are making you ill. Why would you want to be friends with those things? Right. You don't want to look be at the same piece of anymore. bread and put horns on it exactly. because that's basically exactly. what it is. It's making yeah. you sick. Why do you like that? You don't. You just because that's what you know. People are very scared of change, and when they just make that connection and switch that over in their brain, they'll have a much easier time with all of this because it is it is a big change, but it's only for the only for the good. So you had a remarkable recovery and then you said healing the gut takes a long time. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it took at least a few years for you to feel, years, yeah, feel better. Because I was, yeah, yeah. I, was very I mean, Ill. it sounded yeah. Yeah. catastrophic yes. before you yes. began to heal. But you mentioned a few of the, the pieces that kind of got you better. And I'd love to know for yeah. our audience, like yeah. now or then yeah. or anywhere in between, you know, doctors or yes. practitioners or certain kinds of therapies yes. that you're like, this was remarkable for my recovery. Yes, a few things. I did find a functional medical doctor. He's also an herbalist. He's a cardiologist. He's got, you know, uh, degrees coming out from every direction where, who really helped me. Um, you know, the, like I said, some doctors are fantastic and he's one of them. His name is Dr. Uh, Patrick Fratellone. He is uh, Fratellone Medical. I talk about him a lot. If anyone follows me, they've heard I've written about him. He did the forward in my book. Um, he really, he really taught me a lot and helped me. 
Um, I was fortunate enough that I was when I was that ill, I went to him and he started giving me vitamin IVs. And why that was so good is because people don't understand when your gut is that off and you're taking these vitamins, you, you're not absorbing them. So you need these these nutrients and vitamins to go into your so into your bloodstream so with the iv it bypasses the gut and it goes right into the bloodstream so i was very fortunate but i was doing things like um glutathione and uh glutamine and you know antioxidants and things like that were so vital to my healing but bone broth bone broth is something that anybody can do collagen all of that stuff creating um you know, making sure that the gut is, is, is getting to a place where it can heal. Um, I would say look into, uh, not vitamins where you take your liquid or powders that absorb easier. I would say really look into an autoimmune protocol diet. My second book, Jennifer's Way Kitchen is a, it's a cookbook, but it's really a, um, a formula of, uh, AIP, how I, how I do it. So it's very much a prescription book. Um, so in the first chapter, it's all about eating still, but keeping in the guidelines of AIP, which is anything that's going to inflame. So you want to keep those fires, like I said, really, really submerged and really low, um, things like that. Uh, things like, um, enough sleep, enough water, you know, clean water. Um, and a huge portion of all of this is, like I said, changing your mind, really changing your mind to say, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to go down this road now and I deserve to feel better and I can do this. And, you know, don't do it for three weeks and say, I kind of feel better. I think I can go that road again because you feel better because you've been doing the three weeks. You know, people don't get them like, oh, I'm better now. There's no better now. There's different. Um, especially with autoimmune. So there are definitely key things, you know, the sugar, the, the, the bagged gluten-free crap, the, you, all of it gone. My husband and my younger brother buy anything that says gluten-free on it at there the health food store. And I've had to say, you know, 75 times, I don't yep. care what it says. If it's in a box, it's still processed that's, that's, food. That's it. Like, that's I, it. it doesn't matter. That's and they're it. like, that's no, it. but it's got, you know, and I'm like. But it's only 18 grams of sugar. Right. You're like, ah. Yeah. No, no, um, but it's non-GMO. I'm yeah. like, it's non-GMO box crap. Exactly. So. Exactly. So the, you know, there's a there's a learning curve. But like I said, you know, definitely in the beginning, it's overwhelming. Definitely, I get that. But as soon as you start to again, like I said, forget about the things that you cannot have, and look at the world of food that is naturally gluten free, naturally dairy free, naturally, you know, um, that's the other thing I you know people you know, gluten-free, do I have to cut dairy? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry. Yes. yes, you yeah. do. You do. I'm sorry, but I don't care if you don't even have an allergy to it. The way it's processed right now, the what? yes, there are wonderful alternatives. Wonderful alternatives. And should you be eating, you know, all the nuts in the world now? No, you should not. Like everything now, because of keto and all, everything is like a, a gazillion nuts and like nine eggs. Not a good idea either. There's so many amino acids in nuts that trigger other things like thyroid issues. Like people, no, no one's saying these things. It's just like, oh, well, I can have bread. I'll just make it completely out of almonds. It's like, do you realize you're having like 90,000 almonds in that one slice? There's a lot of things. That, yeah, you know. I think it's it's very tricky too because there's certain things like, you know, the blue zones, for example, mm -hmm. the longevity study, mm -hmm. which I, I find so fascinating. Yeah. and. One of the staples across the five mm -hmm. blue zones is nuts every day, you know? And, and nuts every day is fine. But if you're eating five or 10 of them. Right. But when you're making them into a bread or a cake, there seriously is like a bag of nuts. Like someone needs to really show what that looks like. This amount of nuts, not okay every day. This amount of nuts, that's, but that's our. Well, and also certain, certain conditions for people, they shouldn't have nuts at all. At all. Anybody who has um, uh, the herpes virus in their system, which we all kind of do, there's there's something, I think it's ly is it lysine in the, in the nuts that it's totally awful for that. It's awful for that. So people are, I wonder why, you know, I keep getting a breakout or what. It's how much nuts are you having? People don't know these things. And, it's, you know, I remember when I first started all of this and 
I was having almond milk every single day. Almond milk in my shake, um, but it was a boxed almond milk back then. I didn't know it had the Corrigan in it, which is horrendous for you. Almond milk, and then I was having um, boiled eggs because they were the easiest. Do you know I still can't eat either one of those because one of the wonderful things my doctor taught me he said when especially when you have a system like this but everybody you should be eating on a rotation diet so your body doesn't get used to the same thing it will form an allergy i was having this every day so almond i can have some almonds but like making something out of almond too many almonds no good and eggs completely gone because i i just destroyed myself yeah and and if you look across time you know, a variety in diet was really important. One, because food doesn't grow all year there in the same go. way. There you go. And also because sometimes, you know, that one, that crop just didn't, didn't turn out Absolutely. well that year and you've got to try something else Absolutely. or keep experimenting. And, yep. you know, as many different varieties. And also, if you think about how many different vitamins and nutrients each kind of food has, right. don't you want the full spectrum? Well, you don't want to thing. overdo anything. That, that's you know? the other thing. I always say eat in season. Like, I love tomatoes, love tomatoes. And people are like, oh, well, it's a nightshade. Does it bother you? And I was like, you know what? If I'm eating them through the winter constantly the way I want to eat them, absolutely. If I'm growing them in my yard in the months that they are they want to come into this earth, I don't have a problem with them. It's a completely different thing. People forget. They think we're like the master of the universe. We're just part of this planet. We're here with the seasons, the trees that go up and... That's all we are, so we're supposed to get in groove with everything, but we think we just want to control No, everything. let's just, you know, pave concrete right let's over that. Pave concrete right that, over that, that over that groove. Yeah. We can do everything. No, it's not, it's not the way it goes. Yeah. So, you know, I've learned, you know, uh, blueberries. I love them. They're not in season all year. I'm going to eat them when they're in season. You, you can handle them that way. That's why it's made that way. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Um, so something you, when you were talking about your going, your detox, I just, mm -hmm. I thought of the word detox and yeah. it's so misunderstood now, but I'm learning more about it and how important it is for gut healing to mm -hmm. kind of like pull toxins from the body. Mm -hmm. Do you do any things like, I know people do the uh, coffee edemas or yeah. infrared saunas or dry brushing yeah. or anything else yeah. to kind uh, of. Uh, there was one time in the midst of all this where I was, you know, healing. And then you go through a period where something's off and I had to take something else out of my diet because I had going through a very high inflammatory thing where I was losing a lot of hair in front and I lost all my eyelashes at one point. It's been a fun road. And I realized <laughs> that it was inflammation and um, I had, to, again, had to readjust, started to readjust. And at that time, I went and did some clonics. And I have to say, it was extremely helpful at that time because I was so toxic. Um, it was extremely, but you need to go to someone who really knows what they're doing. Uh, there's a woman named Tracy Piper at the Piper Center that I love. Um, she's in New York. Um, wonderful. And she helped me a great deal. There are um, simply taking you know, sugars and coffee and all. That's a deep form of detox. Um, dry brushing, I believe in completely. I believe moving the lymph system is so huge, so, so huge. I actually have a tra little trampoline that I'll bounce on because it's so, so good for the lymph. The last thing I was love about to it. say was rebounding. Love but, it, yeah. love it. And then um, the saunas and stuff like that. I love all of that stuff. And uh, lymphatic drainage, I'll get cupping sometimes. Anything to get the toxins out, especially living in Manhattan, it, you know. We're you surrounded have, I know. by we're toxicity. Very, well, we're surrounded by everywhere. toxicity, but luckily we're also surrounded by a lot of great practitioners yeah, and services exactly. that you do get it. Toxic, right. And then you go pay people to get it out of you. Yeah. That's why I go out to uh, the, the, the woods where I have a, a place that is my healing. The other thing, seriously, and I, I didn't know this because I was born and raised here in Manhattan and in Brooklyn and, and, uh, and, you know, always around the concrete jungle, so to speak, how vital nature is. It's, it's, it's vital. Having my house out, like literally say in the middle of the woods, I am a different human, a different human. And it feels so completely right. It's like, oh, you came home. Like I hug my trees when I go there just to plant something in the soil. Like it's, you need to have nature. So what, I think it's a very big part of healing. You need to get in the grass, put your feet in the grass. I always say, even if you have a windowsill, 
have a plant, grow herbs, do something that is of nature. It's so vital. Of course, the lime victim in me is like, grass. I had it. Don't worry, I had it. I had it. I had lime. But I will tell you, because I ate the way I eat the way I eat, it didn't affect me as it would have. But I, d I do have it in my system, and my boyfriend got it at the same time. He went down like a like a like a tree. Me, I didn't as I wasn't as bad, but we were constantly checking. And as soon as I I felt like thumbs off, this is not normal for even for me. And I saw it in my boyfriend. I said, "We're going to get checked." Went straight to my doctor. He said, "Absolutely, we gotta. You have to take that antibiotic." I did it. I had um he has these wonderful tinctures um uh herbal the dr fratellone you mean? dr yeah. fratellone um he actually is uh he treats people with lime like serious lime that can't walk and he treats with bee venom and i have to say pretty incredible really extraordinary uh studies on that you should look it up it's really incredible yeah, along the spine he does uh bee stings it's pretty incredible. wow yeah it's pretty incredible so something you said just i triggered a question when you took, so I think it was already after you'd um, started to heal your gut. Mm -hmm. When you took the antibiotics for Lyme, did mm -hmm. that send you in any, because I know sometimes people who have gone through a lot mm -hmm. and had a lot of steroids and antibiotics, when mm -hmm. they re-expose their yeah. gut to antibiotics, it's like, it's like, no way. No. Thankfully, I think I could say I've taken antibiotics two or three times in 11, 12 years now. I okay. don't take it. I won't take it unless I'm pushed to the point. That, he told me, he was like, you have to take this. However, there's a whole thing with us celiacs that a lot of people will understand. And if they don't, they need to understand this. Uh, generic medication, which that's the one that's, of course, covered by insurance. FDA does not require the companies to tell you exactly what's in the pill. It makes me so angry for anybody with an allergy, eggs, dairy, gluten, 9.9% .9 of the time, there is gluten as a binder in a lot of these medications. So you think you're doing well, meanwhile, you're feeling like shit. So when I'm going for medication, I will research the shit out of it. Also, because uh, usually I don't get the generic, I'm paying for a brand, but I got this brand of uh, the, the Lyme drug, um, the antibiotic, that I have never taken an antibiotic that didn't affect me at all. I was able to take it because it was clean. Of course, I'm paying for it out of pocket, which is horrible, but I was able to take it and not feel anything because it's a lot of times those antibiotics, and yes, it's it's screwing with the gut, but you take your probiotics, but it's also because of the amount of other crap that's in it. So especially my celiac friends, they really need to look into that. Yeah, people don't talk about that enough, no, actually. They don't. Never. No, they don't. Yeah, and I and talk about antibiotics all the time. Really needs to be, it really needs to be uh, brought to and, and changed as far as in government because they're egg allergies, nut allergies, that they are not required to tell you exactly what's in it in a generic drug. We could sit here for six more hours and yes, talk about could. the problems with yes, the pharmaceutical industry, yes, but I know- And then we'll be killed. Yeah, exactly. Walk out of here. Yeah. Um, but I know you have to run. So last question I want yeah. to ask you, and thank you so much for sharing of that course. incredible story. And I'm so happy to see, and I hope other people see how well you're doing now and that yes. it's totally yes. possible and it is how possible. much you went through. So if you're even close to what, you know, that state was that yeah. you described and the no, psych ward or the detox, like you it's can, possible. you can get through it. Yep. So we do something with all of our interviews called like how I get wellby. So basically uh -huh. just if you could say like I get wellby by and you're just describing your absolutely can't miss kind of wellness routine in a given day. Okay. So the stuff that no matter w how busy you are, if you're yep. traveling, whatever it might be, yep. you are steadfast yep. in. How I get wellby is accepting who and what and whatever state I'm in for that day. I'm not going to give you a routine. I do not want to put more pressure on you to go and do something, go and be something. The first thing to feel well is to accept where you are, who you are and what you're dealing with. You cannot go anywhere until you do that. I needed to accept that I had celiac disease and my life was going to change and I was still okay. You need to accept I'm 50 pounds overweight. I accept it and go on from there. 
all of the wellness rituals and routines are not going to be worth anything if you don't like who you are and be grateful you no know, for whatever it is it could be one thing gratitude will change everything i think that may be my favorite answer ever awesome i love it awesome well, thank you so much again so this has welcome. been wonderful you're so welcome